Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're uh, excited about the preparation this week uh, to go to Mississippi State and play an exceptional football team. And um, we're just starting that process right now. I had a good practice yesterday, and uh, we'll get into the pads and nuts and bolts of the game plan today. Um, going back to last week, I was pleased with the way the guys <coughs> played. I thought our energy was really good, especially starting the game. We'd challenge the guys to start really fast, uh, which we were able to do. and. Uh, uh, didn't have any let-ups, which I was really pleased with. Uh, coming out of halftime with a big lead. Week before, we, we gave up a pretty easy touchdown. And, and this week, uh, guys had uh, you know different uh, mentality coming out of halftime to continue to put the hammer down, and, and we were able to do that. So uh, excited about the win, and now we've got to turn our focus to nothing but Mississippi State uh, because it's an exceptional football team, and it'll be a tough environment, but it's a good measuring stick. We, we need this game. We need to find out. Uh, as a coaching staff and as players, you know, kind of where we are. So we'll open up for questions. Chris, really after your scoring drives in two games have been tough with 10 or more plays, and Mississippi State hasn't been prone to allowing those types of drives so far. How important will it be to impose your will and have those long scoring drives Saturday? Well, we'd take the explosive plays for, for touchdowns too. Uh, and, uh, you know, the if you have the opportunity for explosive plays, we've got to get them, but it's – Without a question, it's going to be harder to do this, the sustained 10, 12 play drives against a, a defense of, of, of their caliber. So um, we just got to do a great job of mixing things up, what, you know, from from efficiency in the passing game to being able to control the line of scrimmage, which um, you know, obviously will be a difficult task. Plus, you know, just the noise and, and the operation uh, will be more difficult. You know, it's easier to do all that stuff at home. So uh, it'll be a big challenge for our offense this week. Your recipe for success over the years, and this offense this year is already averaging 29 first downs a game. And looking back, that's better than any of your North Dakota State teams. I know it's only two games, yeah. But maybe what surprised you the most about this offense and its early uh, success? Uh, just how well they've they've understood the system, understood what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, but we're also having really good success on third down, which you know, keeps those drives alive, obviously, and keeps the time of possession and, um, you know, grind out more first downs and those type of things. Um, it's been obviously really pleasing to us as a coaching staff to see for two straight weeks what we've done offensively and sustain that now. Um, you know, this will be different different deal this week. We're going against uh, a defense that's got a lot of veterans on it, uh, uh, a lot of size and speed. And so, like I said, this will be a big challenge for us offensively. When things come so easily for you in back-to-back -back games, what kind of message do you preach to the team before a game like this? Uh, well, we haven't gotten there yet, but you know, just well, the same thing we've talked about before in here. We, we're not worried about Saturday today. We've got to have a great Tuesday and getting our getting our preparation ready, uh, offensively, defensively, and, and on teams. Um, you know, we don't we don't worry about Saturday on Tuesday. We don't worry about it on Wednesday. We just the first two weeks. I think the reason we've had success is we haven't looked ahead. We've we've stayed on task of the course of each day in our preparation, and that's that's what we're trying to build here. Is you know, just we talk about it, stacking great days, and that's what we have to do to be successful. He's a great player. Uh, it's it's fun to watch him. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to be fun to watch him live, uh, but he he's tremendous. And uh, Coach Malone obviously was was around that uh, that team last year. And uh, just seeing the way that he runs, he he breaks tackles. He beats you with speed. He's he's a great jump cut guy. Uh, he does everything, and they're giving him the football enough uh, to make plays. And um, I know. Uh, that uh, he's going to be—he's going to be a focal point of what we're doing on defense to try to slow him down. How has your team responded to pressure and the simulated situations you put them in in practice situations? Yeah, they've—they've they've responded pretty well. We did a, a two-minute drill yesterday. Um, today we'll do some red zone stuff and some third down situations to try to get uh, you know the best wide receivers going against the best defensive backs and and uh, Skyler under uh, pressure from our you know, starting defensive line and linebackers and 
I think it's just it's going to make us better just having that competition on a daily basis and and it's still going to be an ongoing process it just doesn't happen uh, on one day it's going to be each of those days that we do it which are Monday and Tuesday throughout the entire uh, year and, and hopefully that'll season us uh, when we get into those pressure moments. You brought up the fact that Van was on their staff last year. You also have Isaiah Zuber as a receiver there now. What are the advantages and disadvantages of a unique situation like that? Um, well, with Van, I think he can just tell the guys about uh, the environment, um, what it was like in the locker room before playing K-State. Um, you know, just little things like that. He may know some of the personnel. You know, I, I think on the flip side of it, uh, with Isaiah there, and I, I wish him uh, the best. I enjoyed my, my brief time with Isaiah. I think it's just the personnel piece, you know, because he didn't practice last spring, um, you know, from understanding our offense totally. Uh, I think it's more the, the personnel. I mean, he knows, he knows these guys really, really well. I know obviously a lot's changed since that game last year, but what stands out to you when you watch the film of that game? Um, just watching that, I think Kansas State had a great opportunity early on and uh, just weren't able to capitalize on some things. And, and uh, the quarterback from Mississippi State was a, a tremendous football player that made a ton of plays and kept drives alive and uh, made plays with his arm, his feet. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, it's a game that we're watching, but systematically some of the things have changed. And so we're not putting all of our emphasis into that. We're, we're looking at more of these first couple games um, with what they're doing, obviously they got to be looking more at our first two games rather than last year as well. With the change of quarterback and their uncertainty right now with that injury, how does that impact your preparation? I don't think it's going to impact it a whole lot because I think they're going to do what they've done. They played a couple quarterbacks last year and they still stayed with the same system. Um, you know, in the middle of a game, you, you typically don't change, but when they had the um, the change it uh, to start the second half or ending that first half, I didn't see much different. Uh, I thought the the young the young quarterback came in and did a phenomenal job uh, and, and was really sharp. And, and I'm sure for Coach Moorhead, he was really excited because the moment wasn't too big for that young man. He came in and played really well. So, you know, whomever they put out there at quarterback, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be the same formula for success. You know, get the ball into Hill's hands and. Um, you know, be efficient in the packing, pa passing game, and, and the quarterback's always going to be a threat running the football. You mentioned uh, just there that looking at last year's game and the first two games of this year, Traylon Hill's got to get your attention. Absolutely. He's, uh, he's a difference maker. He's a phenomenal tailback and, and um, can beat you in so many different ways. And um, we've got to do a great job of, of keeping the cup and keeping our leverage on him and, and doing a good job of tackling him because he breaks so many tackles. He's a, he's a real physical runner. Well, just through two games, um, it's probably like us, you know, learning a little bit more about their personnel. Um, you know, they're 2-0, they're and o, so however you want to look at it, they're having success. Uh, and, uh, you know, just different pressure packages, um, letting their guys just go up front. I, I'm sure that uh, um, each game that the guys play, just like each game our new guys play, they'll get better and better. And uh, um, But they've, they've had really good production on both sides of the ball, and uh, obviously, they they always have tremendous athletes with uh, um, really good speed, and, and they they run to the football so well, and, and they hit you when they get to the football. That's the thing that I, I really see on defense for them. One final question: uh, Coach Knight of ECU, Jack Noise, you do speakers to emulate crowd noise. Do you do anything like that? And how do you emulate crowd noise? Well, we do the jet noise just, and we've done it for a long time, and we've done it each week. So far, you know, leading up, we did it to two weeks before Nichols, the week before Nichols, and then last week. Uh, and since we were in the stadium the last couple of weeks because of the weather, both the offense and defense had to deal with the noise. Um, we're out more on the grass right now, so we can confine some of that noise uh, just to the offense. But, um, you know, it, it's nonverbal communication is what we have to get really, really good at. And fortunately for us, our offense has had to deal with it these last two weeks because we do it for our defense uh, every Wednesday, Thursday. Did you say why are they not practice later? 
I, I would hope so. He didn't participate yesterday. Um, we're, we'll see him today, even if it's limited, um, but we're, we're hopeful that he can. Well, Jax, like I mentioned, because of his physicality, um, I thought Josh Youngblood kind of just emerged and just felt more comfortable probably because he had so many snaps the, uh, in, in the first game. And uh, a number of guys that, are, that just getting their feet wet, whether it's Logan Wilson and Will Jones to both the running backs, Joe and Jacardier. I mean, we played a number of guys now. Will that continue on? We'll have to look each week from a game plan standpoint. Um, but, uh, you know, Jax was the one that, that I, I think had the most production. I know you have a lot of faith in Skyler, but is this a week where you have to keep him level at all, or has he seemed pretty calm like it's just another Tuesday like you talked about? Yeah, no, he's been really calm, uh, and it's still his daily preparation. Um, and the thing I really appreciate about, about Skyler is he's not getting ahead of himself. I mean, uh, on Monday, here's what he watches, and here's what he makes sure – from the base down and distance and, and choice downs, what we're, what we're wanting to run. Today he'll look at more third down stuff and more situational stuff. And, and that's what I've been really pleased with Skyler is he's so level-headed and he's just, he's attacking today's game plan, which is some of our third down stuff as well as some of our choice situations. Well, I think that's the landscape of college football now, too. More and more young players are going to play for a variety of reasons, whether it's the fact of there's a four-game rule, that's the number one reason, to the fact of so many people are entering the transfer portal that rosters are depleted a little bit. Um, but we tell everybody they have the opportunity to play. Nobody's going to promise them playing time, but they have the opportunity, and if they – they do the right thing and understand what they're doing physically and mentally then they have an opportunity to help us and once again every week's going to be different from here on out uh, of those 11 guys yeah you know, I think five or six are in the plan this week but maybe none will be next week or just a couple I mean every week's going to be different and part of that is still you know the broad perspective of are we going to stay healthy at certain positions <laughs> Yeah, they've got tremendous speed and athleticism in the secondary. They they can play zone coverage and break on the ball and, and are tremendous tacklers in, in those settings, uh, but they can lock you up too and, and play exceptional man coverage. And I think we have to be prepared for for both. You know, there's certain games you watch from last year where they're playing a lot more man coverage uh, and having really good success. And then there's other games where uh, they sit more in their base defense and um, you know, the ball's maybe caught in front of them, but there's not much after, after the catch because they, they have such tremendous team speed. Uh, and and I, I've been so impressed with the, their ability to tackle and not let people have much after contact. Yeah, the, the three guys you said again, who, I'm sorry? Uh, John Holcomb and yeah. uh, Cartier. And okay. Um, well, every snap that John gets is great for him from an experience standpoint. Forget just carrying the ball of understanding the defense, seeing the reads. Uh, maybe he's handing the ball off. Maybe he's throwing quick game. But just seeing those pictures, is it single high, is it too high, all those looks help John immensely. They help him. That, that helps him more than uh, what the running backs are seeing right now because – with the running backs, those two young guys, we were wanting to get them carries. They weren't in there to pass protect very much. We just were late in a game. We were ahead, so let's see what those guys could do. Could they break tackles? Could they see the hole in those things? And and our hope is with Joe and Jacardier that that experience will make them better. Will it make them better in the near future in, in playing some more games, or will it make them better in the distant future for next year of just getting those uh, snaps from experience? And then, uh... Well, Reggie will have a lot of people down there, uh, and I know he's excited about the opportunity um, to probably see a lot of family, and uh, uh, Reggie's a very competitive guy. I've really enjoyed uh, being around Reggie and, and getting to know him, and 
um, how his peers feel about him, um, electing him uh, as captain. It's, it's going to be a big week for Reg. Uh, are you going into Saturday with the expectation that, that Cody Fletcher and Jonathan Durham are going to be available? Um, Jonathan will be for sure. Cody is probably, we'll find out on Wednesday with Cody. You know, he didn't practice yesterday and he'll be limited today. I'll know more about Cody probably Wednesday or Thursday, but Jonathan should be good. I don't have a I, I don't have a set policy, yeah. but it's all different. If it were Jacardier Wright and he couldn't practice till Thursday, that's going to be a struggle for him. If it were James Gilbert and he couldn't practice till Thursday, it wouldn't be a struggle for him. It's all based on your experience factor and, and how much you're in the game plan and what position you're playing. If you're a position where there's a lot of depth and we can use you for a dozen plays, we will. If a position where we don't have a lot of depth, then we probably got to get the next guy ready to go for more extended time. So, uh, but I don't have a set policy on you have to practice a certain amount of time. So, Coach Moorhead, uh, fellow uh, FCS guy. Yeah. I'm curious if you ever got a, a look at him at Fordham, and you know, if not, just uh, you know, what you've seen. Well, he did a great job at Fordham. He um, he had a great running back there. Um, Chase, I want to say it was Edmonds, but Chase I know was his first name. He, was a, he had a great running back, and we were out a, a, at the same awards banquet um, in Philadelphia. And uh, I was there with Kyle Emanuel, who, who won the Buck Buchanan Award. And um, we visited out there, and a uh, tremendous amount of respect for what, what Coach has done and uh, done it the right way. Um, he elevated that program at Fordham, had a great opportunity at, at Penn State, made the most of that. Uh, and then obviously um, has a job at Mississippi State and, and doing, a, doing a great job. So much respect for Coach. Uh, so I'm at the convention this year, um, had a quick conversation with him, looking forward to seeing him, uh, to pick his brain a little bit because uh, he's been doing this a little longer than I have at, at, at the Power 5 level. But uh, a tremendous coach, a tremendous person, and, and uh, excited to see him again. Wouldn't it be fun if we didn't face any adversity the whole year? Yeah, that would be great. But uh, we know it's coming, you know. And uh, uh, to the to the upperclassmen, to the captains, to their credit, they they came out ready to play and um, jumped on these two teams early and and made a statement. And I, I'm so happy for those guys, which told me an awful lot about uh, they don't worry about the who we're playing. It's it's just coming ready to play. Um, and, and so we know there's going to be adversity um, and probably going to be some adversity this week. Uh, there's so many guys that have played in big games that I'm counting on those guys rising up and, and raising their level of play and more importantly challenging the guys that haven't played uh, at this level yet that, you know what, it's no different than, than us going against each other on a Wednesday in August when, when tempers are flaring and stuff and we're going – ones versus ones and it's a battle um, and it'll be a different atmosphere for sure but that's the competitive spirit and the fire that you want that uh, I'm excited because our our upperclassmen and our captains doing a great job of leading. Also wanted to ask you about uh, Skyler kind of joked uh, about the fourth down play yep. that he said if he had if they hadn't made the play he might have heard about that on the on the sideline but how much how important is the, is the situation also when you when you go for something like that, and is that kind of something? Well, no, I, I told him it, it uh, when he came off the field. I said that I hope that shows you how much confidence we as a staff have in you, and he knows we have tremendous confidence in him. But uh, I knew that he was going to get us in the right play, uh, and he was going to execute it. And if it wouldn't have been successful, if they'd have called it back or something, or said it wasn't a, I, I wouldn't have changed my thought. But I, I think it's really important. Uh, especially at that position, that um, you instill as much confidence in, in those guys as you can to say, hey, this is your game. It's fourth and three. Go make a play. And one thing we were talking about prior to that snap is the ball was going to be in his hands, whether it was going to be a run pass option. Uh, we were just going to throw a quick game, uh, but they ended up pressing, and uh, we thought Malik could get the guy, or, or Skyler thought Malik could beat him on the fade route and, and gave him a shot. And, Shows as much about uh, Malik as well of, of making a big play on a fourth down. In a tight game, though, um, when it's coming down to the wire, are you a little more careful about? 
All, all depends, you know, all, all depends on, on, the, on the field position, the situation, all, all those things, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I can't answer that based on week to week, what, what, what we do. Does the, the heat and humidity, where you're going to be playing, affect how you try and do things and prepare? Yeah, absolutely it does. Um, you know, we've had some heat and humidity here, but not, uh, not near enough and not as much as, as we're going to have down in Starkville. But... Uh, we're hoping that it's going to be hot and at least it's going to be humid here these next few days. We were outside yesterday, although the sun was not, it was at least humid and so we were able to get outside. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful and confident that all the training that these guys did in July when it was really humid was hot with Coach Dawson. Um, you know, when, when chips are down and you're tired and you're gassed, boy, you, you really got to fight through it then. Um, I'm hoping that helps us as well as these next few days. And the fact that it's a non-conference game and we can take a few more bodies helps us as well. And, and we, we full well know that we're going to have to rotate uh, a number of bodies in there early on so that uh, um, we stay as fresh as we can in the second half. Not a lot of sacks so far, but if you have a young kid or whoever it is at quarterback, and quarterback, how important will it be to get some pressure? Yeah. Yeah, that's an area that we know we have to continue to to challenge the guys and improve is within our pass rush. And I think we've had some really good individual pass rush situations. Once again, we haven't had that many plays to do it. Um, and, and in that many critical situations, we've played a lot of, of, of backups and not the starters. Where we have to get better at is working together, you know, whether it's a tackle and, a, and an end in a game or two tackles on a game, whatever it may be. Um, we've got to continue to improve upon uh, in that area. But uh, I'm, I know there's a lot of veteran guys that have had an awful lot of success and, um, you know, just now getting them in the right situation. But maybe that's no different than it's a critical third and eight uh, in a game on Saturday. Can one of those uh, veteran guys make a big play for us? Yeah. Do you have any experience with the I, I don't. There was a, a game they were trying to schedule with Alabama when we were at North Coast State, and I'm glad they didn't do that. Um, uh, but, no, I haven't. Uh, obviously uh, excited about the opportunity um, and uh, been down to that area, spoke at Georgia, uh, like I said, a couple of years ago and got to see the environment and uh, all, all that stuff. But it, it'll be a great experience for for all of us uh, as a coaching staff, uh, you know, we got a number of coaches that have been at this uh, SEC and coached in and against SEC for a number of years. Our players are excited about the opportunity um, to go down there and, and they know as, as well as I do that this is not a win at all cost game, not a lose at all cost. We're going to play, we need to play our best football to have a chance to be successful. But we're going to go in there with with the hope and the thought that uh, we play our best. We have an opportunity to be successful, and that's that's all I'm hoping for is that we play our best football on Saturday and see where we're at. This will be after ESPN's College Game Day um, national telecast. Great opportunity for K State to showcase itself as you know one of the players in the Big Twelve this year. Yeah, sure it is. Um, but I think y you hope you measure yourself every week. I don't care if we're on whatever station you get an opportunity to tee it up you only get 12 opportunities all year and none of them are guaranteed we have a couple of guys that are that have lost their seasons whether it's harder or, or justin hughes that you never know when it's your last play and so i don't i don't care where we're playing who we're playing you have an opportunity to play this game that's the greatest game out there um, you make sure you're prepared for yourself make sure you're prepared for your teammate and your brother next to you so that uh, we can put our best foot forward uh, each saturday Yeah, I was I was pleased um, with both of them being able to complete a pass or two. That was the big key for us. Obviously, there's some different things we do with John than we do with Nick, uh, but I was pleased that we threw a couple of a couple of strikes outside uh, uh, in somewhat critical situations, a third and short for them. You know, once again, every situation. I don't care if it's a uh, a fifth-year senior, a redshirt freshman, or a true freshman, no matter what time of game it is, it's your opportunity. And I was really pleased. You know, I know Nick had a really good completion. I think it was to, to Seth or to Landry on a third and two or third and three and had another one 
on maybe even a fourth and one or fourth and two to Josh Youngblood. Those are big plays for him from confidence standpoint. So um, Colin and I visited again this week. Each week we'll just see who has the better week, but they're both in the plan and we could use both of them. No, I just think he's got to play within himself and play within the system and the, in the scheme and take what the defense gives him. And uh, uh, right now he's been able to uh, take some shots with some people that are playing some press because of the fact that everybody had to come up closer to the line of scrimmage to try to stop, uh, stop the run. Uh, this week, we don't know. Are we going to see man? Are we going to see zone? Uh, he's got to do a great job of just seeing the big picture, see what he sees, uh, and then between he, Mess, and, and, and um, Coach Klein, get us in the best play uh, and, and play within himself. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank